My name's Reese. Are you not? Did you like the Munare? Oh my god, it's this guy again. Can someone tell me how many videos we've already made about this guy? Two? Gee, thanks, man. That has to be the single most useful thing you have ever done in your entire life. Do watch the previous two videos, though, on this genius of a man. Basically, he's one of those ex-Muslims who converted to Christianity. His entire content is aimed at demonizing Islam rather than spreading Christianity. His latest video is intended to expose the truth on Islam and show how a lot of Muslims are actually secret apostates. Sit back and enjoy my amazing jokes. Is Islam really the fastest growing religion in the world? Yeah, pretty much. The growing number of Muslims in the world is mainly due to Muslim families having more and more children. Sure, yeah, but who's stopping all these countries from procreating? Who is stopping them? Considering the fact that a Muslim man can marry up to four women, and considering the fact that Muslim men are also allowed to take female captives to use for sex, then it's really no surprise that birth rates in Muslim nations are so high. Wonderful point. Okay, so let's say polygamy is the main reason for high birth rates. See, a Muslim can only have children through marriage, and a Muslim man can get married up to four times at once. A Christian in the Western world, though, can only have one wife. Mr. D-Dot, Christianity only allows us one, so I had to get the best on the first shot. A Christian can have one wife, but 20 girlfriends. Get the tape. He said, I had to choose the best. And you know, the best was not good enough. That's a lot more women to have children with than just four. So, Reese, why don't you get to it then and solve the West's population crisis? It's okay. Don't worry about the sin. It's already been paid for, right? Anyone interested in the whole sex slavery nonsense can watch this video of mine from the fourth minute. Now, my man's got a lot more interesting ideas he really wants to share with us. These aren't ideas that I'm promoting. They're facts. Oh, really? <laughs> well, let's check out some of these amazing facts, shall we? This is God's harvest, and one of every four people that you see in this picture is no longer a Muslim. What? Hey, 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 what a fact! Amazing, amazing investigation skills done by this guy. So we're just picking any random picture of Muslims now and assuming one out of every four of them are no longer Muslim. You hear that, Dawa bros? One of you ain't Muslim. Uh, 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 never mind. So where did my man get his facts from? An article published by NewRepublic.com states that the percent of people throughout the Arab world who express religious doubt is roughly 22%, with countries such as Lebanon being as high as 37%. Oh my god! Wow! Hmm. I wonder what makes Lebanon different. What does Lebanon have that the rest of the Arab world doesn't have? Oh yeah, Christians! Lots and lots of Christians, the highest of any Arab country. So the one country that has the most Christians has the most religious doubt. So this report, which is a sham by the way because they have nothing backing these percentages up, is as damning for you as it is for us. You're an idiot and a scammer! Let's go to America for a moment. Probably the most Christian of all Western countries, Pew Research polls indicate Christianity is in pretty pathetic shape. One out of every three Christians in America have left Christianity since 1990, with only 63% of Americans today identifying as Christians. And even in that 63%, the story really isn't looking much better. According to Gallup, only a fourth of the Christian identifying population believes that this 
is the literal word of God. 58% of Christians believe this should not be taken literally. As a Muslim, this is absolutely crazy and illogical to comprehend. This would be a cause for mass takfirism of an entire country. But if you're a Muslim, you should realize that the Bible is not even close to the Qur'an. See, in Islam, if you believe that even a single letter of the Qur'an is false or from other than Allah, you are a kafir. In Christianity, though, it's a much more debatable topic on whether everything in here is absolutely true to the letter or not. The church has always seen the Bible as infallible, which means we can't question the Bible and we must obey the Bible's authority on all matters of faith and practice. However, inerrant means something different. Inerrant means the original manuscripts of the Bible have no detail errors at all and no inconsistencies. This kind of developed in reaction against some of the more liberal views of Scripture. So if someone says, I think the Bible's infallible, but it might have some detail errors, these people are going to be like, shut up, liberal. So that video just described the 25% on this poll, while 58% believe there can be errors in the Bible. What could be worse, you may ask? 16% of Christians in America say the Bible is just made up ancient fables. This doesn't include the former Christians who are now atheists. No, no, no. These are the 63% Christians in America, out of which 16% are telling us that the Bible is completely made up. This is a very sorry picture for Christianity in America. Muslims are leaving Islam by the hundreds of thousands, and I'm all for it. Why? Wipe that smirk off your face! These Muslims aren't becoming Christians. Why does it matter to you? Look at your situation and look at ours, and focus on yourself. I mean, look at this. In the space of five years, 13 million people are leaving Christianity in America, with most of them leaving religion altogether, and a good chunk of the rest becoming Muslims. People leaving religion is a far greater problem for Christianity than it is for Islam. We're still a net positive in religious switching. Inside America's Islamic community, one of the fastest growing populations is Latino. Yeah, cry some more. Remember that idiotic point you made earlier on? This is God's harvest. And one of every four people that you see in this picture is no longer a Muslim. This is God's harvest. And one out of every three people here are no longer Christian, and three out of every four people here don't believe the Bible is the complete word of God. Now look, this is a 12-minute video, and if I start debunking every sentence of this clown, we'll be here all day. So I'll make this very quick. His percentages of atheism in the Arab world is unsubstantiated from this New Republic article, and quite frankly, expressing any degree of religious doubt and equating it to full-fledged atheism is a stupid argument. He then uses a report from Gaman to show Iran's lack of religiosity. And just like any survey done, it has many loopholes in it. For example, I want you to follow this closely. According to this report, only 27.8% of Iranians believe in any organized religion. But 39.6% identify as Muslim. And 40.5% perform Salah. Now look, this doesn't invalidate the whole survey or anything, I just wouldn't bank on it to accurately reflect the situation of the entire Muslim world. But of course, if honesty isn't your strong suit, then you'll clutch at any straws you can. Lastly, he gets hold of a Pakistani Ramadan transmission from an entertainment network that is known far more for comedy than they are for religion. In it, 
some mufti, and I really do mean it in quotations because unfortunately the clergy class of Pakistan is a big joke. But that's a separate discussion. Or actually, no, you know what? See, if this clown were talking about legitimate problems in the Muslim community, like the fraudulent clerics in the quote-unquote Malvi class of Pakistan, I would be more than happy enough to take his clown status away. But he doesn't talk about legitimate issues. He just makes himself look like an idiot over and over again. Coming back to this mufti though, he's claiming that he has a report that there are 400,000 people blaspheming Islam in Pakistan. <laughs> Let's take the entire 400,000 at face value, since fact-checking clearly isn't his strong suit. 400,000 out of a population of 231.4 million. That's 0.17%. So your best case scenario is an unverified high-end figure claiming 0.1% of the population. Need I remind you of Freedom Land over here? <sighs> Any closing thoughts? Muhammad can't even measure up to Christ's ankles. Well, yeah, I don't think anyone can measure up to your Christ's ankles, given he was hanging pretty high up there. No, no, okay. Sorry, sorry, guys. I'll, I'll make better jokes than that, I swear. And the Quran can't even touch the Bible. Yeah, because the Bible doesn't have wudu. No! God, please, no! No! Okay, okay, I'm sorry, you guys. You guys had to suffer through those last two jokes. I mean, I haven't really been at the top of my game, you know. Look here, I'll, I'll make it up to you guys. Let me end it off with a real comedian. Christianity is indeed a superior faith to Islam in every regard. <laughs> Quick disclaimer here, this is not Isa alayhi salam. This is the Christian's false caricature of him that we wholeheartedly reject. Because the actual Isa alayhi salam is far superior than any concocted version of him that Christians like to call Jesus. And one more final thought, it's hilarious how he thinks he is defending the honor and sanctity of the Bible by putting Islam down. Men. Go defend your beliefs against your own fellow believers. Here is a female pastor who kicked the Bible off stage. And she didn't do it privately like these ex-Muslim clowns filming garbage in their rooms. She did this in front of thousands of Christians. And nobody from the crowd said anything. Oh my goodness! Oh. Is that a touchback? Can you yeah, even get a touchback? Honestly, Christianity is in pretty bad shape in the Western world, and the more clowns like him continue to attack Islam, instead of introspecting, the more we will grow while they will implode.